Hey, this is your teacher Roy with a video going over chapter one where we're having an overview of what accounting means and what we're going to be doing for most of the semester. So why study accounting in the first place? Well, most of you are taking classes or here in college because you want to get a job or get a promotion or change jobs. And almost every job has some aspect of accounting built into it. Here in our Accounting 2.1 class, we're going to be focusing on the preparation of financial reports, financial statements. But to get to this point, you have to actually do the bookkeeping, the nitty-gritty work of accounting. So here, general accounting, we're going to do lots of record keeping or bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, I think that's two Ks. And under bookkeeping, we have things like payroll, if you want to pay your employees. Most of us uh, appreciate this from a viewpoint of an employee. Now, if you want to take this to the next step and want to see the employer's point of view for payroll, the best way to do that is to take a class called Accounting 132, Payroll Accounting. And included in payroll accounting, there may be some work dealing with taxes, not income taxes, but uh, payroll taxes. And also for Hawaii, we have something called the general excise tax. And every business in Hawaii um, has to pay this tax. So taking this other class, Accounting 132, is a good thing to learn, to learn payroll and the GET tax for Hawaii. And maybe if you're interested in income taxation, that's another class I take if you want to do some tax uh, return preparation or even tax planning. The class to take is Accounting 134, Income Tax Preparation. And if you want to get a business aspect of income taxes, the next class after 134 would be 137. So typically we use the same book for both classes and chop up the chapters to be individual based for 134 and business based in 137. And you can see lots of other jobs, positions, types of work that deal with accounting. So accounting is important. That's why we require all business majors to take at least one accounting class. Now if you're an accounting major, maybe you want to work for a, a, a company. Most companies are called private and could be as small as a mom and pop store, could be maybe your own business out of your own home, your garage, or could be a um, Fortune 500, uh, Standard & Poor's 200, like maybe the biggest company in terms of value is Apple or Google. They have accountants or so lots of accountants working for them. Now these private companies have to prepare those financial reports, financial statements, and give them to other people. And to ensure the accuracy and reliability of those reports, there's another type of accounting called public accounting. And more specifically, the people who work here are called certified public accountants or CPAs. And the main thing they do is they audit the financial reports of the private company. For most accounting majors, especially that go on to a four-year degree, their goal is to work in, for a CPA firm to become certified, a licensed CPA. And they can either stay within the CPA firm and eventually maybe make a partner in a, in a partnership, or a lot of them will work for their clients, join their um, customers, their clients as an employee working for them, and still can do accounting work and or the government has a lot of accountants working for them, accounting related jobs. I teach a class at the UH West Oil campus online for the past three years called Government and Nonprofit Accounting. And if you're like me, I work for the state of Hawaii, but I'm a teacher. I teach accounting, okay, which I really enjoy. Okay, so there's lots of work in accounting. So if you go on to Craigslist, and lots of online sites, you see one of the most popular types of jobs is accounting or accounting related. A key aspect or concept here in accounting is to be honest, 
to be fair because it's so easy in accounting to to cheat to steal and we're not just talking about taking cash from a cash register but we're talking about even a higher level stealing by the executives of the company and the main way they do that is to manipulate those financial reports we had talked about so if you make yourself your company look good maybe you can keep your job or get a raise or if you have lots of sales uh, you can have a bigger commission right so ethics applies to all levels of uh, positions in a business and you always have to keep that in mind is something wrong or how can we prevent um, being unethical so what we're going to be learning throughout the whole semester is accounting rules and when you put them all together they're called generally accepted accounting principles or gap not like the gap store where you buy clothing yeah our gap store you're shopping for accounting rules so we're going to learn lots of accounting rules throughout the whole semester the main people that or organizations that make accounting rules is called the Financial Accounting Standards Board or FASB or FASB. Another group that makes accounting rules is the government, the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC. Lots of uh, acronyms, yeah, letters. And another group that's trying to get a global type accounting rules going is called the um, International uh, Financial Reporting Standards. And the U.S. is kind of slow in moving toward here. They rather follow the, the FASB rules. So here are some examples of accounting rules. Here they call them principles and assumptions that are kind of introduced to us in Chapter 1. I'm not going to spend time going over them in detail here, but we'll actually apply them maybe even without identifying which ones we're uh, using. So now you want to do your accounting for a business and there's different ways of running a business, different forms of a business. We call those forms entities and the simplest type of business entity is a one owner business. Now you can have lots of employees working for this business but there's only one single or sole proprietor, one owner and this business is not a corporation. That's this type here. Okay? So if you want to work out of your own home, possibly this is it. And it can get really big, okay? but possibly then you want to move on to another type of form, business entity, if you get larger. So here is when you have more than one owner that's not a corporation, okay? a partnership. And then what we are going to be studying for most of our semester, a corporation has lots of, typically lots of owners. Now keep in mind that uh, you can also have just one owner for a corporation. We call the owners of a corporation shareholders or stockholders and the minimum amount of shareholders is just one. And there's no maximum amount like those uh, large companies I mentioned before, Google or Apple. They have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of shareholders. Yeah, but you need to have at least one and that's the way we're going to start off with simple corporations in our our textbook. One of the main and simple accounting rules is to have this formula called an accounting equation and just like equations in math they always have to be in balance and this kind of summarizes just three items in this equation here on the left side of the equal sign is everything that the company owns that has value that we're going to use up or spend in the future we call those things assets and on the right side of the equal sign is everything the company owns owes yeah not owns but owes to other businesses other people and there's a third component here on the right side of the equal sign called equity. This is really the owners, like the stockholder, sole proprietor, I put the apostrophe over here, owners interest in the business, shareholders, 
their interest in the whole business. Okay, so what you owe other people as loans or creditors you owe, plus the owners, all of that has to equal what the company owns. Now you always should take the viewpoint of the company now, not really of the of the owners. Even though we talk about them, when you do the record keeping, the recording of what we call transactions of the business. You always have to take the viewpoint of a business. A business can own assets. A company can own assets. The company can borrow money and has eventually has to pay its liabilities. Okay, the company can enter contracts. So here's examples of assets. Again, things that you own. And the main asset most people like is money, cash. So again, think of the viewpoint of a business now. It's the main cash is maybe not just the money inside of the cash registers, but the main way you hold cash, even personally like you, should be probably in a bank account, checking account. So you can see money being deposited, money being withdrawn, and whatever's left over, like in this bubble here, we call that the balance the leftover yeah, of cash is the balance and we typically measure that continually. Now let's say that you made a sale to a customer at a store and you collect the money okay the cash balance just went up and when you take money out to spend it the cash balance went down what's left over. So let's say that you have another type of business that makes a sale but you don't collect the cash right away you bill your customer so the customer owes you money. Well, that's a transaction. That's a sale you got to record. And the right to receive the money is an asset that has value. And we call that asset, the right to receive money from a customer, an accounts receivable. Accounts meaning that you can have lots of customers. They're each an account and they owe you money. In fact, each one of these bubbles representing an asset is an account. Okay? That's how we keep track of our dollar amounts for our company. Account. Yeah, so here's really sounds kind of weird, but here's our accounts receivable account. Here is our car or vehicles account. Just like the automobile sitting in your garage or in our parking lot. Or maybe the largest asset you own personally is your home. Or in the case of a business, they may have multiple offices or, or structures. And that's going to be a big asset in their financial report. Okay, so let's take a look at examples of the opposite of an asset. Remember, assets are what, what we own and liabilities are what we owe. And let's say you owe the government taxes. So we're going to keep track of the amount you owe right now before you pay it off and put it here in this account called taxes payable. Most liability accounts end with the word payable. Or maybe your employees have been working but it's not payday yet. So right now you owe them money and we're going to keep track of how much we owe them by putting that amount in a wages or salaries payable account. Again, a liability we owe other people. Or let's say that you buy supplies or merchandise and you haven't paid your bill yet. Well, when you owe another company money, maybe your utility bill, we keep track of the amount you owe that other company by increasing this account's payable account. Or if you borrow money from a bank, the bank is going to make you sign papers and one of those papers is called a promissory note. So when you usually borrow money formally from a lending institution, we're going to keep track of that amount you still owe by putting it into this notes payable account. Again, the key word here is payable. Yeah, payable. These are four liability accounts. The third category of accounts is called equity. Remember, we have three components in that accounting equation. Assets are equal to liabilities plus this third part now, equity. Now, 
initially we're going to have amounts being put in by the owner. Remember, this represents the owner's interest. So here's how much the owner put in, contri called contributed capital, or we'll see a term called common, common stock. Okay, so that is the initial amount and future amounts that the um, owners put in to the business, and. The way we want to make money is through profits. So we're going to keep track of our profits by putting that in this retained earnings account. And just like the name says here, retain is this is going to be the accumulated profits over the months or the years we've been keeping. Hopefully we have profits. Okay. Now if you have losses and this balance in here goes negative, we call that negative balance a deficit. That's something you hear a lot, yeah, when you, we deal with the government deficits. Well, businesses can have deficits too. Not a good thing to have, for, at least for businesses. And then, the owners of this business, here they put in the money, may want to get, get some of these profits out of the business. Okay, so we call those money being paid out to the owners dividends. In fact, this would be a negative amount subtracted from all of these others here to show what's left over of this equity. So let's take a look at the accounting equation again, but this time under the equity section, we can break it down into what the owner puts in, again this could be common stock, plus the money we make, this is the sales you uh, sell to customers or the fees you charge your customers, but to make money here called revenue, you have to spend money or incur costs here called expenses. Notice the minus here, yeah? The opposite of making money is incurring costs or spending money or using up those costs. Minus. And we talked about dividends. Again, notice the minus here. Money being put in by the owners, money being taken out by the owners. These three here grouped together is called retained earnings. And retained earnings plus the contributed capital is this equity section of the accounting equation. So we, what we need to do is using keeping that accounting equation in the back of our mind is to record business events, business transactions. So, so let's take a look at some business transactions and see how it fits into that accounting equation. Okay. What we're doing here, and a main objective of our chapter uh, one, is to analyze transactions and record them. So here's our first transaction. This guy or girl, Jay Scott, invests twenty thousand cash to start the business in return for stock. Okay, so right now the business. Remember, always take the viewpoint of the business, not necessarily the viewpoint of the owner. So the business starts off with zero assets, zero liabilities, and zero equity. And here's our first transaction, transaction number one. Cash was zero, now it's increasing. The business is getting this money, so it's increasing its cash balance by 20000 We haven't bought any supplies or equipment yet, so that's the only asset we have here on the left side of the accounting equation. On the right side, we didn't borrow money. This 20000 being put into the business is not a loan, it's an investment by the stockholder or shareholder or the owner. Here we have an account under equity just to keep track of how much ownership we're giving to the shareholder called common stock. Here the dollar amount is the same as the cash being put in. So on the left side of the equal sign we have 20000 cash. On the right side of the equal sign, we have 20,000 equity in this common stock account. Okay, so we're in balance. You notice this is just one transaction, but you gotta have at least two changes being recorded in order to stay balanced, to stay equal here, left and right side. Let's take a look at transaction number two, where the company purchased supplies. You see this word right here? Whenever you see the word pay, that means cash will go down. You're minusing $1,000. And in exchange, remember that's only one change, we have to have another change. And what we're doing with this cash 
is really exchanging it for another asset. Here supplies was zero, now we're increasing it by a thousand. So after this one transaction, total assets are still the same. And we don't change anything on the right side of the equal sign. So, so we're still balancing in our accounting equation. Transaction number three, here we're buying. This doesn't use the word pay, but here it says cash. So we know spending cash minus 15,000 and getting equipment, a new asset was zero now increasing by 15 if you add up all three asset balances balances again is what's left over after the transactions are recorded the total assets is 20,000 again still hasn't changed and we're still balancing here on the right side transaction number four we're going to buy some more we're gonna buy 20,000 of supplies and 2,000, uh, 1,000, not 20,000, 200 of supplies and 1,000 of equipment. We're buying this probably from, let's say, one store. Maybe this is a printer, a $1,000 printer. And here is the supplies for that printer, like paper and toner. And we're making one purchase, but we've got to split up the cost between the two different types of accounts. Increasing supplies, 200 and increasing equipment. Now notice we're not spending the cash. You don't wait to spend cash to record a transaction. When you buy something, you gotta record it, even though you may pay it later on. Or if you sell something and didn't call, collect the cash yet, remember that accounts receivable I mentioned? We'll see that later on in our chapter. The key phrase here is on account. On account means no cash at least for now the cash will be paid or received later on but that's going to be a separate transaction a separate transaction recorded later on in our equation so now we have changes on the right side of the equal sign here we owe a vendor a supplier was zero before now it's twelve hundred dollars it equals the change of increasing the assets by 1200 so when you get the balances total asset balances are equal to 21200 and total liabilities plus the equity same thing okay so we're still in balance here so at any point where you're not balancing you know something's wrong and even if you do balance maybe let's say you put this in the wrong account here Okay, you still will balance, but definitely if you don't balance, you know something's wrong right there. And you're going to try to find the mistake. Transaction 5, we're running out of cash here, so we're going to borrow $4,000 from the bank. So here's the money coming in, increasing our cash balance up to $8,000. And then the other change is going to happen on the left side of the equal sign. Here, the bank is going to make you sign a promissory note increasing our account called notes payable so now the totals assets on the left side and liabilities and equity on the right side are still in balance so far we haven't um, made any money yet remember this is the main reason why we're in business to make sales to earn revenue and then we're going to have to incur some costs to make that money and maybe the owners want to get a dividend distributed to them so here, we provided some consulting services, and the amounts total to three thousand. Now maybe this is like a total of all the services we provided for one month, and we're just making one big transaction entry in here. Or you could put each individual, maybe a couple dozen that equal this, but and you're putting it here. So we're doing a summary entry here: three thousand collected from our customers. Notice where the other change is. You got to have at least two. Now we have a new account called revenue. So this revenue account keeps track of the sales we made, of the fees we charge our customers. And you would have more than one revenue account depending upon the different ways you make money. So if you're a landlord, you would have another column here for, let's say, rent income or rent revenue. Or if you earn from investments, maybe an investment column, income column. Okay. 
So here we just put it under this broad category. This is really a type of account, yeah, and that's under the equity type. So totals still matching. Transaction number seven. This balance up here is from that uh, previous bunch, yeah, so we're still in balance from the uh, first five transactions. In transaction seven, we paid, here's that word pay again, cash will go down, this time for money going to our employees. Okay. Now keep in mind that employees are people who work for you. They're not necessarily the same people as your shareholders. Okay. Shareholders, when you pay them in that capacity, that's a dividend. Here, when you pay people who work for you, employees, that's an expense not a dividend. Those are two different categories of costs, yeah? expenses and dividends. Notice the negative here, negative under this equity section. Whenever you increase expenses, you really are reducing, minusing from equity. Like here, we're spending or reducing the asset on this side. So the total is still in balance. Our last transaction here is now to pay the owners, the shareholders, not the employees now, even though you could have one person in both capacities as employee, let's say president or CEO, and as major shareholder. Well, here's the shareholder part. Again, paid, cash goes down, and notice the new account here. Notice the negative here. Both increasing dividends and increasing expenses are really reducing, reducing the equity account or equity section and we're still in balance. So at the end of this period, here's how much cash balance you have. Here's how much supplies you own, equipment you own, accounts payable you owe vendors, the amount you owe the bank, the owner's investment, how much you paid during this period to the, back to the owners, how much you earned in revenue during the year, and how much cost you used up or incurred during this period. Okay, this is the totals here for the whole, or the balance for the whole period. Okay, we just finished doing this here. Now what we need to do is communicate the results to other people. And we're not going to give that table to them. That's maybe either too much information or not really formatted correct to be useful. There's two different groups of people that use accounting information. One is people who work for you or inside of the company, employees of the business. And the major focus of um, accounting in this um, aspect is really going to be the next accounting class you take if you continue accounting in Accounting 202. What we're really learning is how to prepare financial reports that are used by people outside of the company. Let's call them financial statements. Okay, and this is our class, Accounting 201. We're going to give our financial reports or statements to that lender, that bank we borrowed money from, or give it to the owners of the company. Or when we prepare our tax return, here, those tax return forms have to go to the government. Or reporting like the SEC may go to the government. Okay, so other users giving them their financial statements. Now the internal people also use financial statements but they need more detailed information than, than what we have here. And again you're going to be learning more when you take the next accounting class. Hopefully next semester you don't want to have any breaks otherwise you're going to forget what you learned here in our Accounting 201 class. So the financial reports or statements is divided up usually into four different ones and we're going to see um, at least this first three a lot in the next chapters and we're going to save this cash flow statement for our very last chapter, chapter 12 of the semester. So here's the first one called income statement. You always start off a financial statement with the name of the company, the name of the statement, income statement, and in the case of the income statement you always do it for a period of time. In this case for a whole month, the month of December. And we have two sections on this income statement. One is the money you earned, the sales you made, the fees you charged to customers. Here, this consulting revenue account, $3,000. Remember, this is the total for the whole month. And then the expenses is the second part of the income statement. 
So we only have one expense account here. But let's say you pay taxes, there will be a tax expense here, or utility expense. We're keeping things real simple here, having only two accounts, one revenue and one expense on our short income statement. So we take the difference between the revenue and expenses. The excess revenue over the expenses is equal to a figure called net income, or sometimes called net profit. This is what we call the bottom line. Did you make a profit or a loss? If you make a profit, sometimes we say the company is in the black. If you're um, in a loss, just like the color I'm drawing here, you're in the red and we don't want losses or being in the red we want to be profitable okay so this is only for one period the month of December most companies will make an income statement at least for the whole year for public especially the public we said private companies they may be required to prepare income statements every quarter every three months but definitely you need one every year at least when you prepare your income tax forms, your income tax return. The second financial statement that we're going to prepare is called the statement of retained earnings. Here's that income statement we just saw and we're going to take the bottom line, the net income or loss, and plug it in to one of the amounts here on this statement of retained earnings. Notice it's for the same period here as the income statement. This statement is keeping track of the profits we've been accumulating since the time we started our business. And here's the start of our business. It was zero. Remember, this is a new business. And then here's the profits for December. And here's how much of the profits was paid out as dividends during the month. And here's the amount of profits we have at the end of the month. Again, we call that profits we keep retained, kept earnings or, or or profits. So when we do this statement next month, this figure will move up here. The January 1st, 2012 retained earnings is what you end up with with the previous day, December 31st, 2011. And here's going to be the January net income we add minus the January dividends we pay out equals the um, retained earnings at the end of January that will move up to February 1st for the next period. The third financial statement is called the balance sheet and it kind of copies that accounting equation we saw. Again, name of the company, type of financial statement, but now notice the date. It's not a period of time. It's just one date, one point in time. The end of that period we saw. So when you look at the really the accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus notice we don't have the equity here but we move it down below you notice the assets doesn't show you all the breakdown increase or decrease during the month it shows you what you have on this date these are the balances as of December 31st likewise liabilities as of December 31st we take a subtotal for the total liabilities and here's the original investment by the owner in an account called Common Stock plus the retained earnings that's coming from that previous financial statement we saw, the statement of retained earnings. When you add up this two, this is the total equity, 21700 And we add that to the liabilities to get the total here on the right side of the equal sign like we saw in the accounting equation has to equal the left side. Okay, so we're balancing on the balance sheet. Now we're not going to get in too much detail until the very end of the semester to analyze or to create a cash flow statement. But meanwhile, you can see here there's three sections. One is called operating, second is called investing, and the third is called financing. This is the main part right here, running our business. Or here investing in big assets. Or well, here, how do we invest in the whole company? By the shareholder contributing money or borrowing money or paying back to the shareholder. Or really maybe paying back to the bank also would be shown here as a negative. Now notice the amount of cash we had increased during the month. Notice how much? Getting big. 
But this is not the net income or net profit. Remember the net income or net profit was 2200 How come there's a difference here? Our profit for the month is only 2200 but our cash went up by 9700 So misleading, yes? Yeah? So you don't just watch cash to determine your profitability. You got to prepare an income statement to know whether you're profitable. Now, cash is important. And in the long run, profitability is, pro is just as important. Okay, so we have to prepare this cash flow statement also. Chapter 12. Usually at the end of each chapter, we'll go through some analysis by creating a formula or a ratio. Here we have one called return on assets that measures your profitability. So we take that profit or net income figure for the period and we average out the assets during the month, maybe the beginning, average it with the ending, and to give us some kind of um, percentage. And the bigger the percentage, the better. So you, what you want to do is compare one period with the next period to see some kind of trend. Hopefully it's going up. We compare one a rate of return with another company's rate of return to see which company is doing better. Again, bigger the better here with this ratio. So that's it for this chapter. Uh, take a look at the two sample videos for um, exercises I've uh, posted for uh, this chapter. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, contact me. Otherwise, I'll see you later on.